Welcome back. I will now introduce the rest of the course using this picture here. This picture is used to connect the themes throughout the course. We distinguish three relevant levels. The biomass resources, the way they are processed, and the resulting products and their respective applications. All three levels will be addressed in the consecutive themes of this course. Some parts will be highlighted in particular. I will now give you an introduction of all parts. We start at the right end, the products and their applications, because we tend to think of the applications as drivers for innovation and economy. A distinction should be made between energy and materials. Energy is the main bio-based application nowadays. Most of the non-food applications of biomass are for energy production. This may be for generating power, for heating or for cogeneration, this is called bioenergy, or for transportation fuels, this is called biofuels. Biomethane, biogas or green gas is considered a bioenergy product as well. The main biofuel applied worldwide is bioethanol and to a lesser extent biodiesel and biogas. The second week of our course we will treat bio-based energy in depth. For materials, the application for paper and cardboard or for construction is traditional. Yet, there are new developments in particular in construction materials and concepts. However, we focus in our course on replacing traditionally oil-based materials by, for instance, biopolymers, which is the theme of week 4, and high-end chemicals, such as colorants, which is the theme of week 5. A special interest, which is often forgotten in such listings, is the re recycling of nutrients. Currently, the production of biomass is sustained by depletable fossil resources to produce fertilizer, which is not sustainable in the long run. Optimized reuse of nutrients will be the subject of theme 6. Notice that since the bio-based economy intends to replace depletable fossil resources, this excludes food and feed as end markets to be developed. In some themes of the next weeks they may peep in however, especially when, as in biorefinery, the original crop is used to produce food, feed and energy or materials at the same time. Now let's turn to the origins of our bio-based products, the different types of biomass as presented on the left hand side of the picture. Most of the resources for the bio-based economy will derive from purposely grown crops like sugarcane, maize, sugar beets, soil, oil palms and rapeseed. It is not by accident that these are the same crops that have been developed over the last millennia for their high yield per hectare for food or feed. Mostly these are grown for starch, sugar or oil, which are used for food but also for chemicals or transport fuels, mostly bioethanol, in a smaller amount for biodiesel. Yet the same crop contains proteins and other useful substances at the same time, which are used mainly for feed. Forestry is also a main source for biomass worldwide. Very high volumes of wood are used for burning, for construction, for paper milling. Research predicts high potential for production of transport fuels and chemicals only current applications are still small. New variants of the traditional high yield crops can be further optimized as is currently done with sugar beets. A developing niche is to grow new crops for special chemical ingredients like colorants or medicines. Arable farmers are looking for complementary crops such as agromiscanthus or fiber hemp. This sums up the dedicated crops as the most important resource for biomass feedstock. Urbanized regions such as Western Europe will have to import most of their biomass feedstock. Other less densely populated countries such as Brazil, Malaysia or Sweden act as net exporters. In the group assignment of this course you will be challenged to design a completely autarkic or bio-based city. Residuals are produced along the food or bio-based production chains. Primary residuals range from landscape maintenance residuals, roadside grass, manure from dairy, chicken or pig husbandry, to post-harvest residuals like corn straw and beet leaves. Secondary residuals typically come available in the processing industry and distribution chain. Tertiary residuals may be considered urban waste 
from human consumption like kitchen and garden waste and sewage sludge. In general, these feedstocks are used for low-value applications like compost, fertilizer or combustion. Yet, even the production of chemicals or paper from these hydrogenous flows is currently under development. A special place is reserved for the dedicated production of aquatic biomass such as algae or weed. Non-food applications are still small, but the expectations are high. Not in the least because in our Dutch region of origin we have so much water and so little land available. Theme 7 will be devoted to growing and applying such feedstock. Now we conclude with some words on the conversion of feedstock to products. In the different themes of this course you will see many examples of it. The third week is devoted in particular to different conversion techniques. We not only have an obligation to replace fossil-based energy or materials by bio-based ones, we do have dire obligations to use the biomass as efficient as possible. This is because any biomass stems from a scarce and finite resource that is the acreage of productive land on which we have to grow our food and live as well. And because if we throw away half of our feedstock we will not be able to set up a viable business case. Little biomass applications have one single application for the complete resource. Just try to come up with one. The biomass is best split up in different useful and less useful parts for all of which we preferably must find a profitable destination in either of the different markets. This separation in different economic fractions is called biorefinery or whole crop utilization. Biorefinery is treated in detail in week 3. In the end, it is the summation over all parts and over the supply chain from soil to end user that determines the economic and environmental viability of the process. We will come back to that in the last week. Well, I hope we gave you a good taste of our course. This first week may be a bit abstract at first with a lot of new definitions and summing up of feedstocks and products. But the next weeks promise to be a lot juicier albeit somewhat more technical, giving you many examples of the bio-based economy in practice. I will return to you in the last week to give you some considerations on how to bring all these ideas and technologies to practice with an elaboration on sustainability and economy. For now, thank you for your attention, good luck with the assignments and goodbye.